Today, B-Dog shows us what 14 handicap golf actually looks like. In his previous video, he was 13 over par for 9 holes. Today, he tries to embrace Jomo golf, the joy of missing out. He'll show us how if we just hit a few average shots in a row and take joy in missing out on hero shots, breaking 90 is child's That's a play. Great shot. That's the best shot. On the opening hole, B-Dog hits a green in regulation and gives us a big lesson. Watch the other golfer's shots on the opening greens. How fast is the green? My putt went almost off the green and B-Dog could learn from that and just whisper on the ball to allow it gimme for a par. This tiny thought process can affect how you putt all day. So ticklish. Perhaps B-Dog will be scared of the green speed for the remaining 17 holes. In the opening three holes, get the speed control dialed by observing your putts and others. Great shot. Beauty. Beauty. B-Dog had a lesson with Eric after this round to fix his slice and thin shots. If you want swing help but there are no coaches around you, the Swing Tweaks app is a convenient and well-priced solution instead of thousands of confounding generic YouTube swing mechanic videos. You send two swings directly through the app to a pro who will analyze your swing and give you explanations of what's happening, plus give you great solutions and drills to work on. The tweaks are stored in the app forever, so you can always refer back while working on your swing. Use code SIDEKICK to get 20% off your first week with Swing Tweaks. B-Dog has left himself three first putts on the greens from above the hole in the first three holes. That's tough. I explained to him that this putt is not a makeable putt. Just lag the ball to the hole, leave it tap in, GTFO with a par on the stroke one index hole. That's impressive golf. If you had 15 pros come through here, PGA Tour pros, that yeah. probably one out of 15 will make that putt. I can live with that. You can't really control being above or below the hole on approach shots unless you are highly skilled. So the next best thing is to understand that you need to get it to tap in ski range. Get up. Mm. Roll. Mm. We can take that one off. Here's a shot that can make or break the par 5. The direct route to the hole is blocked and you can only play for the fairway on the right. You have to reconcile that in your mind to succeed. If you get beeline fever trying to hit through the trees or around them with a slinging draw, you lose. Assess the options. You can still hit the green from Texas on the right side. It's big, conservative and kind of safe. Think about the shot you want into the green and then play to that. It's easy.
Notice how B-Dog hits a drive into a fairway bunker, into another bunker, onto the green, and walks away with an easy five on the stroke three index hole with zero impressive golf shots. That's superb scoring. That's a worker. Come back. Oh, it's gonna be a long time. <laughs> wow. Come back. Damn. Three putts are going to happen, especially if you hit greens in regulation and have long putts. We always strive to eliminate them, but forgive yourself if you make one or two per round. But always be on the prowl to eliminate them like a savage. It's much easier to point out the small ways B-Dog can cut shots from his score rather than to focus on how well he plays the front nine. He implemented the art of scoring very well on the front nine. He's five over par and had two three putts on two of his greens in regulation there's at least one shot he could cut easy peasy. You're not going to hit many perfect shots in a round, but if you can string a lot of average shots together, keeping the ball in play, you can shoot mid 80s every week without breaking a sweat. If you can take joy in missing out on that one perfect shot you've been trying to replicate for seven years, you're ahead of the game. Play what comes out on the day, not nostalgia golf. Our hero heads into the back nine, looking on target for an easy 83 or 84. He does have four holes on the back nine though, which have bad juju for him. Check this out. B-Dog just broke the cup. Dude, you just, you just wrecked the cup. What did you hit there? You're supposed to hit the cup, aren't you? Gee, whiskers. You know, they got a big BMW golf day here today, and you just destroyed the cup. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Do I'm I proud get a BMW? No, because you know what the difference between a cactus and a BMW is? Yeah. The putt he faces is very difficult. If you can understand how difficult a shot is, you can create an image in your mind of a good result. Trying to hold this putt with aggression looks good in the mind. It's a side heel putt. And as the ball dies, the slope moves it left and away from the cup. The higher up the slope you go, the more speed it will take you into the hole. You could end up 10 feet from the cup if you get too aggro. If you can two putt this, you are way ahead of the game. B-Dog does a great job and we're onto his first bad voodoo hole. He scored a seven and an eight here prior to this round. He hits a five wood for the first time on this tee instead of the six iron, which he did before. Yet on the shorter approach, strokes gained, he hits the ball into the left bunker. You do not want to be in the left bunker here. On a scale of one to 10, the shot is an eight for a 14 handicap. He is below the hole, hitting onto a side slope onto a fast green with minimal space to get the ball onto the green and then stop in time. Most people would go directly at the cup, land it near the hole and roll off the green. Not B-Dog. When you understand that this is a tough shot for any golfer, you appreciate just how good your shot was. His next voodoo hole comes up right away. Last time, we learned about how the environment affects your shot selection. Has B-Dog remembered that lesson? 
We've got 176 in the bunker here to the hole. What are you thinking? 176, that can be a 7 iron. Um, okay, why do you say 7? That's the exact distance for yeah. a 7. 7 will go one, 170 to about 185. Why do I have a problem with that? Because it's out of a bunker. What else? No idea. Bunker in breeze. front. Into the breeze. Into the breeze. Uh, half a club wind. Okay. What else? Uphill. Uphill. Greens how far above us do you reckon? Five foot. Maybe three, four yards above us from where your ball is. So you're going to add another five, six yards. So you're playing this one is 176 with the wind, with the sand, with the slope, effectively 190. Understanding how difficult the shot is will help us select a better shot. If we envision perfection without the skill set, we create bad juju. From 175 yards in a fairway bunker to a raised green into the breeze with a bunker guarding the green, only an elite golfer will have a chance to hit the green. I'll say it again. In this instance, only an elite level golfer can hit this on the green. That's the beginning of making a mental image of a good shot. Once we eliminate the impossible, we are left with what is possible. After the shot, what shot would be an easy shot onto the green? A partial pitch shot to a raised green over a bunker is not easy. Can we hang it back and leave a comfy 60, 80 or 90 yard shot in? Yes. Watch how B-Dog's very small decision to hit six iron from the bunker intending to hit the green compounds into further difficult shots, leading to a snowman. The second par 5 is the Bermuda Triangle for B-Dog's brain. I have to step in to ensure a scorer's mentality takes over. 217. 217. To the hole. We've got a bunker in front of the green. Open right, open right side. What are, you, what are you thinking? I don't have a club that goes 217. I have a club that goes 235 or 180. Once so. again, once again, once again. Let's think about the environment. What do we feel right now? I'm going to go... What do we feel? right now kind of happy the sun is nice we have a breeze into us oh. that's easily a club easily on a on a hybrid a 235 club brings it down to 220 okay easily and your hybrid has a propensity to move to the right yep so we have a lot of space on the right I would go dead at it with a hybrid if you go in that bunker tough luck I think you're gonna be front right edge People struggle to score in the 80s because they botch second shots. B-Dog was avoiding hitting the hybrid because he still thinks that it goes 230 yards. It just does not. You must know your true carry distances and also your shot shape with every club. Then use your shots to set up easy shots for you. B-Dog can hit the hybrid and it will be at best on the green and at worst he will be way right where all the open space is. He never hits it left with a hybrid, oh, wow. so that isn't yes. even an option. Yes! Look at that, bro. Well
can't complain. Especially with the lava. Broke, broke my wrist, so then we're good on that one. But look, guess what I did with mine? Yeah. Switch. Yeah. Yes! yes. <laughs> hey. Nice! Did your money with that thing, bro? Work, That's gonna work. 133 for the 50. Here's B-Dog's final voodoo hole. He leaves himself a delectable 130 yards into the green. From 130 yards, he likes to hit a 50 degree. I, a three handicap, like to hit a pitching wedge. I don't mind a 50 degree, but the only reason it's going 130 yards is because he hits it hard and de-lofts it. Often this results in pull shots. We have water on the left side of the green to collect pulled shots. Look at the massive amount of Texas on the right side. The small decision to play toward instead of away from water compounds into a triple bogey. If you take five seconds to identify the space on the right side and aim for safety, your score is capped at a five maximum. Unfortunately, the water ball plus a Trey Stabberini gives us a seven and six shots to get in the hole from inside pitching wedge range. For every double and triple bogey on the card, there was a very small decision you made that created the rolling snowball. The good news is that you can stop yourself and make a better decision at any time during your round. Better decisions plus average shots all strung together in a row means low scores. I assess and give B-Dog a great score for how he played 15 of the 18 holes. Truly great artful scoring golf. He used the game he had on the day. He scored eight over par for the remaining three holes. Two of his four three putts were on holes that he messed up before reaching the green. The irony of pear-shaped holes is that you must care enough until the last putt is dropped. If B-Dog yeah, strayed the in the wall, moment and two-putted the it. terrible 12th and 16 holes, he shoots 84. B-Dog shows us that average shot after average shot with a good one thrown in occasionally is great golf. Making good decisions compounds into good scores. You can do it too, it's so easy. But being disciplined to stay in the game is the most difficult part. That's Joe Mo Golf giving up the fake glamour for the reality of breaking 90. Just don't read that the way Spanish people would. <laughs>